Hey guys, thanks for joining Learn to Play. My name is Lance, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Raid and Trade by Mage Company. This is a three to five player game that takes roughly an hour and a half to two hours to play, and in it you're playing survivors that have lived through World War III, and you're trying to gain entrance into the Golden City. Now you can do this by getting respect, uh, gaining favor points, or even getting enough skill points. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. Right, so we're going to go over the character card as well as the character setup at the beginning of the game. So at the beginning of the game, each player will choose one character that they'd like to play as. They will get their character's item cards, their character figure, and their character dice, which the crack in the dice will be the same color as their item cards and their character's name. And then at the top of their character card, we have the red yellow wheel, which represents the city council's opinion of that character, with red being displeased and yellow being respected. At the bottom here, we have the blue dial, which represents that character's skill points, and that'll be set at zero at the beginning of the game. And then on the far end here, the green wheel is the player's actions, action points, which will be set at 15 at the beginning of each turn. In the middle of the card, we have the breakdown of the player's dice and all the symbols you'll find on it and what they mean. And then we also have the turn overview, which will go through all the different actions the player can perform during the turn and their costs that they have. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at are the quest cards. So at the beginning of the game, Depending upon the number of players, you will deal out one quest card face up per player that's in the game. And then during the player's turns, they can choose to resolve a quest at any point in time. In order to do that, they would have to follow the steps on the card. So if we're looking at this first card, we'd have to spend three resources of any type that we have. We'd have to spend two incident cards that we have. And we'd have to spend three favor that we have. Now with the favor we cannot drop into the blacklist side so we have to have at least enough favor to stay on the favor side. Once you meet the requirements you can collect that quest card and once per turn you can perform the action that's listed on the bottom of the card. When you draw a card from the quest deck then you would flip over the next card and reveal it. Uh, and, the, and the other example that we have here with this one, you'd have to spend three mechanical resources that you have, three favor points, and three of your rated houses. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at are the tiles. So we have a couple tiles here we're gonna go ahead and look at. So the first thing on the tiles you're gonna notice are that they have white squares in them. And at the beginning of the game, you'll go ahead and randomly deploy different buildings in those spaces. Now you're also going to see that some of the spaces have numbers in them. So those spaces will be filled with buildings only if you're, if you're playing with that number of players. So we have four and then five. So if you're playing with four or five players, then those will be randomly filled with buildings as well. Now a couple of things to note are the red bordered things are considered barricades. So you'd have to spend one point of action to be able to move over them. And then the areas that have the yellow lines on them are considered height areas, so you'd only be able to move into those areas from the ends and not from those sides, from the sides of those areas. Now, once you're in a tile, you can move around that tile without spending action as long as you don't go over barricades. And in order to raid a building, you have to be adjacent to it. So you'd have, you'd have to be where it connects to a road. So with these two buildings, you could be here or here. In order to get to this one, if that had a building, you'd have to spend one point to get over the barricade. And then same for these two, you'd have to spend a point to get over this barricade here. But then you'd have access to both of those. All right, so let's go ahead and go through setup. So the first thing you're gonna do is put out the central tile. It's the one with the orange circle on it. Once you've done that, then you'll go ahead and populate the rest of the tiles at random by putting them out, making sure that's, that the roadways don't lead to nowhere. OK, 
Okay, once you've done that, then you'll go ahead and grab your four black market, black market tiles, mix them up and choose one of them at random to be your black market. From there, like we talked about, you're gonna go ahead and fill the white spaces with buildings at random. Now, depending upon the number of players, as you can see in this chart, will be the number of buildings that you'll deploy at random. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and do that real quick and then we'll come back. All right, so once your buildings are done, you'll have one spot left open at random in the map. And that'll be the spot where you're gonna place your outpost. If you have the outpost figure, you can also place that instead of the car instead of the token. Once you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and put out your different cards. So you have your incident cards, you'll have your quest cards, and then based on the number of players playing, you'll reveal those. So we're gonna play a three-player game. So you go ahead and flip over three quest cards. Then you're gonna have your global cards, which is the beginning of each turn, you'll flip over two, and the first person will decide which card will be in effect for that entire turn. And then you're gonna have your three different building raid cards. And then up by your outpost, you can go ahead and put your uh, credit tokens. All right, so once all players have selected their characters that they want to play as, they'll go ahead and place their figures in the center of the table on the black market tile. When they've done, they've done that, they're ready to start the game. So at that point, then they would choose one player to go first, and you can do this any way you'd like. The rule book suggests that it's the youngest player, but I usually like to roll a dice or something to determine the first player. And then you're ready to start. All right, so with the resource tokens, there's eight different resources in the game. Each one of the resources has a couple of different pictures representing different things. The, the color on the back of the card is, or the token is what's important. So going in order, we have the blue ones being mechanical parts, white being tools, orange being scraps, red being medical supplies, gray being guns, purple being food, green being electronics, and yellow being clothing. At the beginning of the game, you'll place all those resources, resource tokens in the Raid and Trade bag, and any time during the game you're required to draw random resources, you'll go ahead and draw them out of the bag, and any time that you spend your resources, they will go back into the bag. Alright, so Rate Trade is played in a number of rounds, and each round has a number of different phases that you'll go through. So the first thing you're going to do is check to see if the starting player changes, and you'll do that by comparing all the players' resources that they have in front of them, and the player with the least amount of resources will be the starting player. Once that player is determined, then he will look at the two in, uh, environment cards, or global cards and he will choose one of those cards to go into effect for that round so for example if we choose the tough luck all players would discard all of their resources into the bag and draw the same amounts that they had before and that resource will or that global event will stay in, in effect for the entire rounds the other one gets flipped over once they're done with that then all players will reset their dials to, uh, their action dials which is the green dial to 15 and then the starting player will take his turn and perform his actions. Once he's done, then play will continue to the left, and all players will continue in this manner until the round comes to an end, which will be when all players have either passed or run out of action points to spend. Once that happens, then you would discard the global event card, and you would draw two new ones face up, and then you're ready to start the next round. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the player turn sequence. So when it's a player's turn, they have a couple of options. They get to perform a move, and then they would get to perform one action of their choice, either a raid, a combat, a trade, or a craft. And they can do this in any order, so they can perform their one action first and then do their move, or do their move and then perform their action. With movements, they have to follow the roadways. They have to spend one action point every time they go over to a new tile, 
and, in, and they have to spend additional action points every time they cross barricades or go up elevations, which I'll cover more in the movement. And then from there, then they can do their one action. Now there's a couple things to note. There's a couple other options that players have. They can claim an incident card that's on any tile that they go into. As long as they pay the resources and this is not considered an action and they can do this any number of times that they'd like as they move into different tiles. They can claim a quest card which is also not an action but they can only do this once per their turn. They can spend food resources to gain action points and this is also not an action and they can do this any number of times that they choose. A player also has the option to pass. If they pass, they must pass if they don't have any action points left to spend. And once they pass, they can't do anything but react to other players by, by using any of their item cards or quest uh, actions that they happen to have. Alright, so the first thing we're going to look at is movement. So during a player's turn, they can move anywhere they want to on the board as long as they follow the roadways. When they're on the same tile, they can move anywhere they want to on that tile for free, as long as they don't cross any barricades or change elevation. If they do so, then they'd have to spend one action point for each barricade they cross and each elevation they go up on. If they choose to cross into another tile that does not have an incident card, they will draw a new incident card and put it on that tile. They can choose to purchase that incident card if they choose otherwise they they can continue their movement on that tile following the different roadways and then like I said if they cross any barricades or elevations they would pay the cost for those as long as they have it once they're done then they can we can move into the next phase all right so the next thing I'd like to go over are the incident cards so when a player moves from one tile to another as long as that tile doesn't already have an incident card on it, the t player will flip over the top incident card from the deck and place it on that tile. At that point, the, the person can choose to purchase that incident card if they have the number of resources listed on the side of the card. If they spend those resources, then they can collect that card and put it into their hand. And then during their turn, they can spend that card to perform the action that's listed on the bottom of the card. All instant cards are one use only cards, which is the, uh, which is what the fireball in the top corner means. So once you use it, it gets discarded. Now a couple things to note are that uh, only one instant card can be on each tile, and players can only have up to five instant cards in their hands at any point in time. If they have five, then they cannot purchase any more instant cards until they've used one. Alright, so the next thing we're going to look at are the raid cards. So when you raid a building, depending upon the color of the building that you raid, you would take one card from the corresponding color deck and flip it over. And the first type of card you may see are the cards with the star dice in the top corner. So with those you would roll the star dice, and if you roll a star you would get the number of resources that's listed in the top half of the box, as well as you can perform the action that's listed on the bottom of the card. If you happen to roll a blank, then you would receive the resources that are on the bottom half of that box, and then you would not be able to perform the action that's listed on the card. Now the other type of card you're going to run into are the blacklist cards that have the black skull on them with the corresponding number, and what that means is if you accept that card and to choose to take the resources and the action, that you would have to move your wheel, your red-yellow wheel, clockwise, the number of spaces that that card is. So the first one you'd move it one, and the second one you'd move it two. Now if you were in the yellow zone, you would just move it down so you're subtracting from your yellow instead of moving into red. So once you accept, then you would get the number of resources that are listed on the card, and you can perform the actions that are listed on the bottom of the card. If you decline and choose not to take the blacklist points, then you would flip the card over and place it at the bottom of the deck. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you want to regulate the amount of blacklist points that you have. As you can see on this chart, based on the number of blacklist points you have, it will limit the, the type of buildings that you can raid. Alright, so the next section we're going to look at is the raid action. So during a player's turn, 
As long as they can move adjacent to a building without crossing a barricade or changing elevation, they can raid it. And in order to do so, then they would have to spend the amount of points, action points that are listed on, on, the, on that card or token. So if, if we have Carter here that wants to raid this building, he would have to spend six action points to do so. When he spends those points, then he'll choose, take a, the top card from that particular deck, flip it over, and resolve it. So with this one, we're going to roll the star dice. We rolled a star, so we're going to get to take four resources at random from the resource bag. Okay, and we'll place those in front of our character. And since we rolled a star, we can perform the bottom action. But with this being the beginning of the game, we don't have any skill points yet to spend. So this card is done. And it'll go into the, the discard pile. And then we'll remove this particular token and place it in front of our character. And we can use that at a later point in time. All right, so the next action we're going to look at is a combat action. And in this example, we have Carter and Jake. And it's Carter's turn, and he wishes to attack Jake. So the first thing we need to do is check to make sure they're on the same tile, which they are. And then Carter has to be able to get to Jake through regular roadways, not passing any barricades or going up any elevation, which he's good on. From there, then Carter would have to spend one of his gun resource gray resource tokens, which he has, and five action points. And then from there, he would go ahead and grab his character dice, which let's talk about the character dice real quick. So each side is broken into two different halves. You have the white half and a symbol, which is your attack side, and your gray half with a symbol, which is your defense side. And all sides have both of those symbols. So now that we know that Carter is ready to attack Jake, Jake has an option to purchase a defense dice. If he has any gun resource gray tokens and three action points he can spend those in order to get his dice but he doesn't have any resource tokens. So at this point then Carter is going to go ahead and roll his dice and then we're going to consult Carter's table. So he rolled a POW which is a successful hit. So once we've determined that it's successful hit then we have a couple of options for Carter. He can steal a credit token if Jake happened to have one, which he doesn't. Or he can try to steal resources, and then at this point Jake would have a couple of options. So Jake could either choose to give Carter five of his resource tokens that he had of his choice, or he could allow Carter to take three of his resource tokens of Carter's choice. But since Jake only has one resource token, he'll just hand that over, and that's how combat works. All right, so the next action we're gonna look at is the trade. With a trade action, you can trade with players anywhere on the map, so they don't have to be adjacent to you. You can trade uh, certain goods, which are resource tokens, item cards, both crafted and not. Both players must agree to the trade, and if they do, then both players will spend one of their action points in order to exchange those goods. If both players don't agree on the trade, then the trade does not happen and it does not count as an action against the player that tried to trade. Another option that you have if you're on the center tile with the black market token on it is that you can trade four of your resources of your choice for one of the resources that's listed on the black market card. So with the craft action you would spend one of your action points and then you go through your item cards and choose one that you'd like to try to craft so we're going to go ahead and try to craft uh, Jake's engine, which is going to cost one scrap and one mechanical part. So we have those. So those will go back in the bag. And it's going to cost one skill, which he has. So we'll drop his skill back down to zero. And then he'll place that item in front of him. Now just about all the craft cards are single-use cards, which is noted by the fireball in the top corner. And then you can use that card at any time you want and you gain the benefit that's on the bottom of the card. 
All right, so the next thing I'd like to go over is the outpost, which is a special place on the map where players can go to improve their character and to get favorite points. So to enter the outpost, no other player can be inside. The player must f spend five of his action points, and this also is going to count as his movements, so he needs to be on the road adjacent to the outpost at the start of his turn, which Carter is. So once the player is inside the outpost, they have a couple of different options. They can work for a credit disc, so they would spend eight of their action points, and then they can claim one of the five different action discs. There's two twos, two threes, and a four. Once they claim their disc, they will increase their favor points, which is the red yellow wheel, by that number of points. The other thing they can do is to test medicine, in which case they would spend 10 of their action points and they would gain two uh, favor points. Now while in the outpost, a player cannot be attacked directly. If a player is forced to leave, they must give three resources to the other player attacking the outpost. And on later turns, if a player chooses, they can stay or leave. If the player stays, he can perform an action in the outpost again, as long as he has the action points to do so. And then with attacking the outposts, if there's another player that's in the outpost already, a player can choose to attack it. He has to spend seven action points to do so, and the player inside must give him three resource tokens of his, and he must leave the outposts and then the attacker would immediately gain three blacklist points which would be the the red side of the red yellow wheel all right so in raid and trade there are three different ways you can win the game the first one is to get 20 skill points and then to be able to spend 20 action points the second way is to collect three different quest cards and again be able to spend 20 action points. And then the third way is to get 10 favor points, which are the, the respected side, and then also be able to spend 20 action points. Now keep in mind that players will start each turn with 15 action points, so in order to accumulate 20 action points, the players must also collect either item cards or incident cards or certain quest cards or also resources such as food resources to be able to generate those extra five action points to be able to spend those to win the game and those are the three different conditions for winning the game.